now let's have a look about look at how to detect multicollinearity okay um when you're trying to detect multicollinearity or test whether there is multicollinearity in the sample that you have with you you should bear two things in mind first that multicollinearity is a question of degree not of kind not of kind what i mean is uh, i as an econometric researcher you shouldn't be concerned whether multicollinearity is present or absent but rather what is the degree of multicollinearity found between your different x variables it will be a big problem only if the degree of collinearity is quite high the second thing that you have to bear in mind is that uh, if you remember from our set of assumptions one of our assumptions of the clrm that is classical linear regression model was that the x variables are fixed or non stochastic uh, what that means is even if i'm taking different samples from the same population many times i'm assuming that the x variables are remaining fixed or non random um every time i take a sample right so multicollinearity is a feature of the sample rather than of the population if you look at data from the entire population probably the degree of multicollinearity will not be as severe or maybe it is not even multicollinear okay so these two things you should bear in mind so even when we are test even when we are testing for the presence of multicollinearity we are try, going to try and assess or understand the degree of its presence rather than whether there is multicollinearity or not we are going to check how severe the multicollinearity in the sample is so uh, most of these measures or uh, methods for detecting multicollinearity they are just rules of thumb that is they are roughly laid out rules even if according to some rule you find that there is multicollinearity you might decide to ignore that symptom okay so what is the first important and very uh, easily noted uh, symptom of multicollinearity that you have high r square in the model but very few significant t ratios you have a multivariable regression model the individual t ratios of these coefficients many of them are insignificant right if that is the case you would say that how can the overall explanatory power of the model be strong or be high so if you notice that t ratios are insignificant most of the t ratios but r square is very high take it uh, be assured that this is due to the presence of multicollinearity okay and um remember that this presence of multicollinearity is considered to be harmful or it has to be remedied only if you need to disentangle you need to understand separately the influence of each x variable on y if you just need to understand an overall effect of all the x variables together on y you might be happy to just estimate this model and you might be happy to not do anything or to ignore the fact that you have multicollinearity in the sample the second uh, rule of thumb for detecting or understanding the presence of multicollinearity is if you have high pairwise correlations among the regressors so you have x2 x3 x4 up till xk variables explanatory variables check the pairwise or zero order correlations check the correlation between x2 and x3 x3 and x4 and so on okay um generally all these rules of thumb are very general rules there are always exceptions that is why they are called rule of thumb as in they are not 
perfect rules or fool proof rules okay so generally if you have high pairwise correlations then it is an indicator that your sample has a little serious multicollinearity problem okay now to put it technically uh, high pairwise correlation is sufficient but not a necessary condition for existence of multicollinearity okay now i'm not going into too much detail because it's not required for you at this stage you just need to understand and mostly you will get a question about what are your methods of detecting multicollinearity so you need to know only this much if you want more detail have a look um, at chapter number 10 in the gujarati book they have explained it even with an example okay okay um Farrar and Glauber two econometricians they came up with a partial correlation test for detecting multicollinearity so what they say is um run a regression on y of all the explanatory variables x2 x3 x4 x3 etc if you find that the r square is high but that the partial correlations between the pairs of explanatory variables if they are comparatively low then they say that it could be an indication of presence of multicollinearity okay but uh, this test has been criticized because it is possible that you find r square of the overall model as well as the partial correlation coefficients to be high at the same time so then you wouldn't know what the conclusion of the test is and then uh, another uh, criticism against the farrar glober uh, test is that a given partial correlation coefficient may be compatible with different multicollinearity patterns okay so these are the two uh, reasons for this uh, which the fg test the farrar glober test uh, of partial correlation test is called also known as fg test it's not full proof like i said so uh, there have been criticisms against this test as well um another method to check whether you have multicollinearity in your sample uh, of a high enough degree to be worried about it is to run auxiliary regressions okay so um the regression of all your explanatory variables on the dependent variable y is called the main regression okay you can run auxiliary regressions an auxiliary regression would be when you reg- uh, run a regression of each xi um a regression on xi by the rem- remaining explanatory variables so you have x2 x3 x4 till xk you have um, explanatory variables if you run a regression x2 is equal to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 x3 plus lambda 3 x4 and so on those will be called auxiliary regressions and then use compute your f statistic based on this formula okay that is using the r square value of this x2 um of the auxiliary regression check whether it is significant based on the f statistic calculated according to this formula okay if you your f statistic is greater than the critical f value you can reject the h not your h not is that there is no multicollinearity so if your f statistic is greater than the critical value from the f distribution you will have to conclude that there is multicollinearity in the sample at hand okay uh, in regarding to in regard to this there is an additional klein's rule of thumb which says that multicollinearity may be present but it will be troublesome only if you find that the r square of any of these auxiliary regressions is greater than the overall or the main models r square 
So if you find that the auxiliary regression has an R square greater than your actual model's R square, then you can conclude that you have multicollinearity which is quite severe. Okay. You also have something called eigenvalues and condition index. Uh, these are your uh, formulas for the condition number as well as the condition index. Uh, these eigenvalues, uh, again, technical uh, variables, most statistical packages can calculate and give these eigenvalues to you. Uh, the rule of thumb, just remember the rule of thumb that if your k, which is maximum divided by minimum eigenvalue, if your k is between 100 to 1000, you are saying that you have moderate to strong multicollinearity. If your k value exceeds 1000, we say that there is severe multicollinearity. Similarly, even for condition index is just the root square root of k condition number. So you can also um, say the same limits based on the same logic. Okay. Uh, finally, you can also check the tolerance or the variance inflationary factor. If you remember, it was 1 divided by 1 minus Rj square. Uh, so, if this variance inflationary factor exceeds 10, then you can say that the variables are highly collinear. Um, uh, tolerance or TOL is just the reciprocal. Tolerance TOL is just 1 by VIF. Okay. Um, here also, this is not a foolproof test because um, even if you have a very high variance VIF, the variance of your coefficient can be reduced if you have um, a small sigma square or a very high summation or large summation xj square. Okay. So this is also not a foolproof method, but it does act as an indicator of the presence of multicollinearity. Uh, finally, another way of um, detecting multicollinearity would be to examine the scatter plots. So take all the explanatory variables that you have, um, plot a scatter plot between the various pairs of variables and it will give you an ex visual idea of the degree of collinearity between the two variables, the pairs of variables. That will also give you an idea of the degree of multicollinearity that might be present in the sample that you have with you. Okay. Um, I will conclude this section by reminding you that micronumerosity, which means having too small a sample size and if you have a lack of variability in the explanatory variables, in the x values of the x variables, these two conditions can also cause the same, very same problems that multicollinearity can cause. Right? So, these two problems, that is the lack of the variability in the explanatory variables and the lack of sample size, can also cause the same problems as multicollinearity. But in econometrics, uh, people do not give it enough attention. Just keep it in mind. Um, it comes in handy when you are actually doing empirical studies, when you are actually using econometrics in your research. Okay.